What's wrong with the prosperity gospel? You know, there's often a push, an understandable push inside the Christian church that says, you know, uh, we need to learn to get along. We have differences of opinions on certain things that are not so essential, and we can make too big a deal out of these things and uh, bicker and argue, and we need to not do that. And uh, into that equation may come, well, what about this prosperity gospel? Well, first of all, let me tell you what this is. The prosperity gospel is this theological notion that it is God's will for all of his people to enjoy great health and great prosperity. Sometimes it's called the health and wealth gospel. It's a view that says that in order to enjoy these blessings, you need to have the faith uh, to receive these blessings. That's why it's sometimes called name it and claim it or blab it and grab it. Well, is this a secondary issue or is it not? And one of the reasons why, in a sense, this matters is that there's some sort of uh, overlap in the sense that Christian uh, media tends to be dominated by people who are uh, involved in this prosperity gospel movement. That is, if you get uh, television stations uh, either over the air or through cable or some other way, uh, chances are uh, many of those programs are going to come from prosperity preachers, some of whom are wildly popular and some of whose popularity crosses over into uh, the more historically orthodox church. Uh, some of these prosperity gospel uh, proclaimers have other heretical notions, including a modalist of view of the Trinity, which is declared heretical uh, 1,500, 1,700 years ago. Uh, and one of those uh, proponents of that heresy is T.D. Jakes, who, again, is in evangelical circles a best-selling author. He's all over the television. He's this and he's that. And by the way, let me say this. I get the appeal. In fact, you know, my father used to say about Robert Schuller, who was, uh, some would argue, an early proponent of the prosperity gospel, although not quite the same roots. Uh, uh, Schuller sort of baptized the ideas of Norman Vincent Peale uh, on the power of positive thinking and put those on the airwaves and was very successful. And my dad used to say, you know, I think people ought to watch Robert Schuller about once a month, just once a month, <laughs> not more, but once a month, because we can just get so down and so discouraged and so unsure about God's love for us. And that when you turn on these guys and you get that kind of positive affirmation, that kind of reminder uh, of his love for us, that can be very encouraging and uplifting. I get that. And I'm, well, that said, this gospel is first false, false on its face, obviously false. Exhibit A, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, who prayed and prayed and prayed to have the thorn in his side removed from him, and God not only refused to do so, but God had, in his grace, uh, uh, affirmed to Paul the reason why. Paul, I don't want to take that thorn from your side because I want you to remember your dependence upon me. In uh, Proverbs 30, we're warned against, hey, don't let me get too poor, because if I get too poor, I might be tempted to steal and do wrong. Also, by the way, don't let me get too rich, because when that happens, I can forget about you. I'm asking you, God, to keep me in a state of dependence upon you. The prosperity gospel says, no, you need to uh, get so wealthy that you don't have those kinds of fears and concerns. In fact, uh, that sense of dependence is a lack of faith. Secondly, this distorts what the gospel is all about. I put it this way. Uh, if you take the position that God wants to bless you, that God wants you to have good things, I am with you 100%. Absolutely he does. The issue is that the things that he wants you to have are spiritual maturity, spiritual growth, 
that you would better reflect the character of his son. These are the promises of God for us, not health and not wealth.